news outlet Roll Call broke the news Monday night that Idaho Republican Senator Larry Craig had pleaded guilty two weeks ago to a misdemeanor. What captured the public and political attention was not so much the charge itself, disorderly conduct. N no, in our number one story tonight, as the old saying goes, God is in the details, and the details are divine. Nothing graphic, nothing sexual happened after all. But if you ever read a police report, you know they are rendered in especially dry style, the style made famous on the old TV cop show, Dragnet, the just the facts style that renders sad, silly human behavior, such as the semaphore of illicit foreplay, irresistibly absurd. In that spirit, we offer the following dramatization, utilizing the actual unaltered text of the Craig incident report, embellished only with a Dragnet style introduction and wrap up, just like on the TV. No actual senators were harmed in the making of this film. The story you are about to see is true. The names have not been changed to protect anybody. This is the city, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I work here. I carry a badge. It was Tuesday, June 11th. It was sunny and warm for Minneapolis. I was assigned to the vice squad, working out of the men's room at the airport. My boss is Chief Dolan. My name is Carsley. I'm a cop. A cop in a toilet. At 1,200 hours, I was working a plain clothes detail involving lewd conduct in the main men's public restroom of the North Star Crossing in the Lindbergh Terminal. From my seated position, I could observe the shoes and ankles of a person seated to the right of me. An unidentified person entered to the left of me. From my seated position, I was able to see his shoes and ankles. At 12.13 hours, I could see an older white male with gray hair standing outside my stall. He was standing about three feet away and had a roller bag with him. The male was later identified by driver's license as Larry Edwin Craig. I could see Craig look through the crack in the door from his position. Craig would look down at his hands, fidget with his fingers, and then look through the crack into my stall again. Craig would repeat this cycle for about two minutes. I was able to see Craig's blue eyes as he looked into my stall. At 12.15 hours, the male in the stall to the left of me flushed the toilet and exited the stall. Craig entered the stall and placed his roller bag against the front of the stall door. My experience has shown that individuals engaging in lewd conduct use their bags to block the view from the front of their stall. From my position, I could observe the shoes and ankles of Craig seated to the left of me. He was wearing dress pants with black dress shoes. At 12.16 hours, Craig tapped his right foot. I recognize this as a signal used by persons wishing to engage in lewd conduct. Craig tapped his toes several times, then moved his foot closer to my foot. I moved my foot up and down slowly. While this was occurring, the male in the stall on my right was still present. I could hear several unknown persons in the restroom that appeared to use the restroom for its intended use. The presence of others did not seem to deter Craig as he moved his right foot so that it touched the side of my left foot, which was within my stall area. At 12.17 hours, I saw Craig swipe his hands under the stall divider for a few seconds. The swipe went in the direction from the front door side of the stall back towards the back wall. Craig swiped his hand again for a few seconds in the same motion to where I could see more of his fingers. Craig then swiped his hand in the same motion a third time for a few seconds. I could see that it was Craig's left hand due to the position of his thumb. I could also see Craig had a gold ring on his ring finger as his hand was on my side of the stall divider. At about 12.19 hours, I held my police identification in my right hand down by the floor so that Craig could see it. With my left hand near the floor, I pointed towards the exit. Craig responded, no. No! I again pointed towards the exit. Let's go. Craig exited the stall with his roller bags without flushing the toilet. Craig handed me a business card that identified himself as a United States Senator as he stated, what do you think about that? I responded by setting his business card down on the table and again asking him for his driver's license. Give me your driver's license. Later, in a recorded post-Miranda interview, Craig stated the following. He is a commuter. A commuter. He went into the bathroom. Into the bathroom. He was standing outside of the stalls for one to two minutes waiting for the stall. He has a wide stance when going to the bathroom and that his foot may have touched mine. The story you have just seen is true. On August 8th, Larry Edwin Craig pleaded guilty to misdemeanor disorderly conduct in court number one for the county of Hennepin. He never told anybody about it. Not his family, not his constituents, not the United States Senate. Not until his news conference on August 28th. In one moment, the results of that news conference. The countdown players in the film artistry